So you might be familiar with the f at g at x notation because we did a little bit of this in grade 10 and grade 11. Um, but there is another way to write this notation. f at g at x can also be written as this. And it looks like fog, which is funny on today's snow day or fog day or whatever it is today. But um, it's actually a small open circle. So it's an F and a small open circle G at X. You can either write it without the brackets or with the brackets. This is a, just a different notation, but it means exactly the same. And the only reason we would have this notation is if you were com doing a composite of a whole bunch of functions. So for example, if I was doing F at G at H at K of X, you know, like a four function composite, it starts to get a little crazy with all the brackets. I don't even know if I have the brackets right there or not. So this other notation is a little bit easier to write. We would write F at G at H at K of X. And so this other, this new notation is just a little bit tidier. Okay? But it means exactly the same thing. So, if we stuck with example one and we, same, we use the same functions, now I'm going to ask you g at f of x. Can you see how that's different than a? So in a, it's f at g at x, so the g is on the inside of the f function, and this is the other way around. This is the same as, if we were writing it down, this would be the same at g at f at x. So the only difference is the order in which we do it, right? So in the first example, we took the g function and plugged it into the f function. Now we're starting with the f function and we're plugging it into the g function. So this is g at and then f from the other part was what? It was x squared minus, what was it? x squared minus 2. Thanks for everybody's help. Just staring back at me. Emmy doesn't even want to laugh just in case that it's on video. But now Emmy's on the video. All right. So this x squared minus 2 now gets plugged into the g function. And wherever we saw an x, we replace it with this. So the g function was 3x minus 1. So now instead of that, it's going to be 3 bracket x squared minus 2 minus 1. We rainbow and simplify this. 3x squared minus 6 minus 1. So 3x squared minus 7. And we have a new function. Good? Now, d looks even more different. This is a composite of g and its inverse. So if you remember this notation here, the g to the negative 1 is a way to do your inverse. And an inverse is something you did in grade 11. And we just, actually we skipped it this year uh, in grade 12. But the inverse is, remember, when you take the x's and y's and you switch them. So before I can do a composite of these functions, I need g at negative 1 first. So let's remind you how to do that. The g function was 3x minus 1, right? So that would be y equals 3x minus 1. Or f to x equals 3x minus 1. Same thing. In the inverse, you take the x's and y's and you switch it. So instead of y equals 3x minus 1, it's x equals 3y minus 1. Remember taking inverses in grade 11? You just switch the x's and y's, and now you rearrange the question so that you have y equals again. So this negative 1 has to come across and become plus 1, 3y, divide everything by 3, and you get x plus 1 divided by 3 equals y. And so therefore, the g inverse of x is x plus 1 
over 3. Questions on that? Remember that? So, now I've got two functions. I've got the G function and its inverse. And it's a completely different function. There's similarities, of course. But now I'm taking the composite of the G function and its inverse at a specific point, at an x equals 5. So we, haven't, we don't have the x function here. So we're not going to go off and find the x function like we did in C or like we did in A. We're going to go right ahead and solve it. So this, to, again, we work from the inside out. So the 5 is going to go into the inverse function first. Then you get an answer, and then that answer goes out to the g function. So this is like g at g negative 1 of 5. Working from the inside out then, we're going to take this negative 5, and we'll plug it into the g inverse function. So wherever we see the x, we'll replace it with 5. So instead of x plus 1 on the top, it's 5 plus 1 on the top over 3. So 6 over 3. The answer is 2. And now we take that 2, and it gets plugged into the g function. So remember, this is the g at x function. So we'll take this answer of 2 and plug it right into the g of x function. So 3 times 2 minus 1. 3 times 2 is 6 minus 1, and the answer is 5. So then g at g composite g to the negative 1 at 5 ends up being 5. OK, so are you surprised that if you take 5 and put it into this function, you get 5 back out as the answer? No, because the inverse and the original are opposite operations. So in the inverse, you add and divide. But in the original, you multiply and subtract. What an awesome answer. That's amazing. Thanks very much, Emmy. Teachers Perfect. Asked to do Don't let me forget to do attendance after this. OK. So before I end this little section of the recording, I want to leave you with this thought. Is f composite g at x going to be the same at g composite f at x? So think about that while the next video gets loaded up.